All right, so this is part three of Learn Go. We're gonna cover variables in this video. So we're gonna start off as we started off in the previous two videos. We're going to say package main. We're going to import the format library, which will be used to output content to the screen. And then we'll create our main function. So again, just like we've done before, nothing new so far. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and define a variable. And the way that we do that in Go is we use the var keyword. So you can see that it's changed color there because it's a specialized keyword in Go. And then we're going to give it a name, so any name you like. I'll just call this one numItems. And then we're actually going to specify what type this variable is going to be. So there's different types. There's int, int16, 32, there's strings, there's floats, there's all sorts of things. We're going to say this particular one is an int, and we're going to define this to be a value of 100. So if you're familiar with the way that you define a variable in Python, if you were to do this in Python, you wouldn't have the var keyword and you wouldn't have the int to specify what type the variable is. You would just have something that looks like this and Python would determine what the variable is automatically based on what you feed it. So there's pros and cons to both of these approaches, but this is the way that Go does it here. So I'm just going to remove that. We'll eventually get to a point where you can do something similar to that, but we'll, we'll come to that in a later part of this video. So let's go ahead and print out num items to the screen. So that would be format.printline num items. We'll go ahead and save this and then we'll give it a run. So again, that's by go, run, and then the name of the file that we're writing to, which is variables.go. So if we write that and run it, we get the output of 100, which is what we set num items to. So let's keep going on. So we can also define variables of other types. Again, Go offers many different types, int, bool, float, string, uh, but we're not going to be going over into each of those types extensively. So let's just go ahead and define a, another variable called price one. This will be a float. So there's two different types of float that Go offers, float 64 and float 32. And depending on whichever one you want will depend on what type of precision you want to represent with the variable that you're uh, selecting to create here. Let's go with float 64. And then what we can do is we can set that equal to a floating point value, so 999. And we can also define another price variable, let's call it price two. We'll define that as a float 64 as well. And then we'll set that equal to 550. So let's go ahead and write those out to the screen. So we'll say format, print line, price one, comma, price two. So we'll go ahead, save that, and then give it a run. And if we do that, we see that the first price, and then a space, and then the second price here, 550. So there's a more concise way that we can define variables in Go. So if we have two different variables here of the same type, we can define them in a more concise manner in the following way. So we can say var, price one, comma, price two, float 64, equals to 999 comma 550. So what we're doing here is we're just using the shorthand to say price one should be set equal to this value here of 999. Price two should be equal to this value here, 550. And then we're saying that both price one and price two are of type float 64. So again, if you're coming from a Python background, you're probably similar to this variable unpacking syntax, where you might have seen something like a comma b is equal to five comma six. Same kind of principle here. A, this variable is being assigned, uh, this value is being assigned to a, and then this value of six is being assigned to b. So that's just shorthand for something like a is equal to five and b is equal to six. So you may have seen that or be familiar with that type of syntax in Python. So we can even be a little bit more concise with this line here. We can say, we can say price one, comma, price two, colon equals, and then the, the values themselves. So 999, comma, 550. So if we go ahead and save this and then try to give it a run, let's see what happens. So by running this here, we get two errors. So it says price one is redeclared in this block and price two is redeclared in this block. So basically what we have here is we're declaring price one and price two as variables, and then we're redeclaring them here. Then we're also redeclaring them here. We're not resetting the value, we're actually just redeclaring them as variables in these uh, two different spots from when they were initially declared. So Go doesn't want us to do this, it's going to prevent us from doing that. So in order for us to run this most recent declaration of price one and price two, we're gonna have to go ahead and comment out these previous declarations. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead, save it, run it again, see if we get the prices out. So we do 999 and 550. So one final thing I guess I will mention is that we can also consider variables of type string. So I'm just going to define a variable, let's call it s, and let's have that be equal to the string hello. And if we go ahead and say 
print line of s, we should see 100, the string hello, and then our two floating point values that we printed out there at the end. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. As always, the code will be available on my GitHub, and the link to that will be in the description to this video. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day. Bye.